Good morning, my YouTube people out there in the world of the YouTube. Um, I wanted to do a quick video here on the status of my hair. I have done, I think, a couple other videos kind of talking about that, but not for a really long time. And not since my hair has gotten this sort of growth. So just kind of a really fast forward to me. I have PCOS. I have very thin, very fine hair. And I have always struggled with the typical PCOS struggles, which include that of just um, male pattern hair loss. So I'm going to kind of show you what that looks like um, on my hair, which you can kind of see. If I do this and I take the front, the bangs on the hair, you can see there's a decent amount of growth here at the, the base. But as I go up, it gets much more thin. Um, and this at the very tip is almost like non-existent, right? Um, now that is not nearly what it used to be. And I think I have an old video where I show how incredibly thin it is at the top um, a few years ago. And so you can really see the difference. And that was, you know, the, the new growth was about this long and then the rest of it was all just really, really sparse, essentially bald at the top. So I wanna talk to you about how I got my hair to this point which was not <clears throat> really as involved as you might think. Um, it was really just a matter of kind of getting my cycle under control. And I wouldn't say my PCOS, PCOS under control because I'm not sure how accurate that is. But um, so I lived in Haiti since 2016 and then in the Dominican Republic after that, but um, everything was kind of already done before I went to the Dominican Republic. Uh, when I was in Haiti, I got to a doctor who was kind of a specialist, and it, he put me on essentially what is called Clomid here. It's a progesterone pill. When I was there, I just kind of stayed on it. Um, now, if you are trying to get pregnant or you think you're going to get pregnant, that's usually what it's used for here in the United States. I am not a doctor, so do not use this as, as medical advice. But what will happen is they'll put you on that, and then they'll test you to make sure that you're not pregnant, and then they'll put it on you, put, put you on it for the next time. So I kind of did that myself and did self-medicate a little bit because you can do that in Haiti and you can actually access this. As long as you know the name of the drug, you can go into the pharmacy, any, almost any pharmacy and pick up this drug. Um, I do not necessarily recommend that, but it did work for me. So don't be going down to Haiti and telling them that Priscilla told you to get this drug and um, yes, because then I will be in all sorts of trouble. But I went on the drug for maybe nine months to a year and it did regulate me and I am still regulated. So I'm pretty consistent in my cycle, which I have not been my entire life since I was eight years old and I had my first period. So this, these are the joys of PCOS. If you don't have PCOS and you have thinning hair, you can still listen, but that's kind of where I was at. I'm trying to be as natural as possible in my hair care because I just knew that that was a lot better for me. Why do my glasses look so crooked here? They don't look crooked on my eyebrows, but they look crooked on my face. There, that's how they should look, right? Or maybe because I have one eyebrow up. They look crooked. Maybe my face is crooked. My face is crooked. Anyway, uh, tangent. So I wanted to go as natural as possible. And so when I was down there, I was finding that washing my hair every day was just not real practical. And it wasn't fun because we didn't have hot water. So even though it's hot in Haiti, waking up in the morning and having that like cold, cold water on you, I was like, yeah, I don't want to do that. So I really just started pulling my hair back a lot. And so I, and it was pretty short at the time. So I just went longer and longer and longer and longer between washes. I had always washed my hair every day because my hair is quite oily, which I think is the case when you have uh, thinner hair. It seems like people with PCOS have that. And that might just be because the sebum is being activated because just the hair itself is not super, it's not super healthy. I have something strange. Like, it feels like a canker sore starting in my, in my mouth. But I don't think that's what it is, so I just keep playing with it. Um, so yeah, and I didn't, it, um, things like shampoo and stuff are hard to come by, like good shampoo and everything was stripping. So I was just like, I'm just gonna just go as natural as I possibly can. I started to find some things that I could use to wash my hair naturally, such as honey. Um, and you can get organic honey quite cheap and easily in Haiti. So I would use honey and eggs and wash my hair that way. 
Um, so I ended up going a week and that has now been my standard. Now I've come back to Minnesota. It is the middle of winter and things are quite different. And I want to talk about a little bit how my hair has reacted. Also how my hair has gotten to this length and the good and the bad about it. Um, why I've let my hair get this length and what I'm going to do about it next. So, um, yeah, so basically my hair started to the, the male pattern baldness subsided as my cycle got into into alignment with the way that it's supposed to be and that kind of took care of that so now i have usually parted my hair on the side just because i kind of had to have the pseudo like comb over you can see um, i'm colored uh from you know almost the roots but there, there's a little bit that's showing here in the gray so i am graying quite a bit um and I do like that. So I, when I was in Haiti, I didn't really dye my hair at all. I've kind of been back and forth here. I want more gray. I want this to really show. And then I'll let the rest of it go. I don't know. I I, I just, the kind of in between, like it's all, it's turning gray, but it just doesn't look quite pretty gray. That's annoying to me. So that's why I dyed it again when I got back here. But, you know, I can, I can let it go back gray again. I, I don't know. We'll see. Well, I'm too cheap to have somebody professionally do it. So, um, but this is basically my natural hair, the way that it is. This is a week, and I wanted to do this today because I'm going to wash my hair tomorrow morning before church. It's kind of my tradition. Um, <clears throat> so, the my main concern with my hair is to keep it as natural as possible. Other than, of course, I've colored my hair, but you know, that's such as life. Um, and to, so I tried not to wash it with chemicals, but I did wash it with Pantene because I was in a hurry and I didn't have the, I didn't, hadn't mixed the stuff together that I needed to, to wash it with egg and honey. So I did Pantene and this is actually what it looks like after a week. So normally it would have been really, really greasy and I've actually added oil to it, the ends, because it's so dry right now and these ends really need to be trimmed. They haven't been trimmed for a minute and by a minute, I mean like months. So I need to definitely do a trim on the ends. I might do a video on that, how I trim my own hair. Um, but I think I'm going to keep the length at least for now. I may take a good, you know, inch or two off of it at the end, just because there is such dry dryness here at the ends. Um, I normally at night, I'll put it into a braid. I'll kind of brush through it. This is my only comb. I don't use anything else other than this. And this slides right through because my hair is super thin and super fine. It is prone to tangle. So right there, I found a little tangle. So as soon as I find any resistance, I go to the end and kind of work through. And then there we are. Now, when my hair, oops, there's another tangle. When my hair is um, trimmed, I don't usually have that problem. So those tangles are really coming from this end. You can see I am losing some hair. Let's see if I can get that close. So I'm losing some hair, but that is much less than what it used to be. It would have been like clumps of hair, but I do, I just do still shed. So I try to keep my hair back and uh, as much as possible, but this end does need to be trimmed. So we'll trim that um, and that will, should keep it quite a bit healthier. So now my real secret is my oils. So um, people say, well, your hair is greasy. Why would you add oils? But it's not the same thing. So oil is not moisture but oil can help retain moisture. So just because you're sweating and whatnot or it's humid doesn't mean that your hair does not need oil. So oil is a protectant, it's a barrier, and it also is what um, gives your hair nutrition. Now your hair is dead, so it's not, um, it's not new living cells, right? It's not regenerating itself except from the roots, but this, the length, this is dead. And our objective here is essentially just to preserve this as long as possible and keep it looking healthy as long as possible because that actually is a dead thing. So what I do is I take a combination of uh, natural organic oils. Now this is an organic hemp seed oil that I actually picked up at Walmart. They have a few of these. And I got this particular one because I'd been curious about using hemp seed oil for a while. Um, but I've used grapeseed oil, I've used um, a, Sweet almond oil, I think, apricot oil maybe. I maybe a couple others. Argan oil I have mixed. So what I'll do, this is actually a mixture of oils. And it smells amazing because there's also essential oils in here, including my Haitian vetiver oil, which is quite expensive if you get it anywhere else and hard to find in that really thick, 
um, the real like un unadulterated version of it that you get from Haiti. And I got a bottle of that and I love it and I'm so excited, but um, I need to get more of it. So I'm gonna have to go back to Haiti at one point. So what I do is I take this, this goes on my face and it goes on my hair and it goes on my body and I use it for massage. If I need that, I'll use it for, if I have any kind of abrasion, I'll use this. It's got um, some of the oils it's got in it. If the essential oils are uh, tea tree and peppermint, a little bit of peppermint and uh, uh, lavender and things like that. It also has rosehip oil in it as far as a carrier. It has argan oil, I think, in this one. I have used argan. I'm pretty sure there's argan oil in this. Um, it has carrot seed oil. And so I basically have just researched a few different oils. I use this on my hair and on my face. I put it in a little dropper like this. And in the morning, whoops, that's too much. In the morning, that's okay, because I'm gonna put some on my hair. Um, I take four drops here because it's the middle of winter and we're in Minnesota. So I put four drops all over my face and my neck and the back of my hands and arms. Um, because hands are one of the things that can show your age faster than anything, right? And also your neck. So make sure you're paying attention to that if that's a concern of you, for you at all. Um, and I put four drops on in the morning and then I put four drops on after washing my face at night, five at night, four in the morning. And I, you can do more at night, however it works for you, but that's what I do. My husband uses this oil now too. Um, and this is really my only... I don't use a serum, I don't use a moisturizer, I don't use anything else. I try to go in with this right after I take my shower because the best moisture you can use is water, but because that's the most natural. So go in after you, you wash your face and it's warm and it's still moist and then put this oil on it and the oil seals it. So it doesn't moisturize your face, but it does seal it. And it is, I don't use a primer, I don't use anything else. Now I'm gonna get closer to the camera here Let's take off my glasses, my crooked glasses. You probably see a little dent on the side of my nose. Um, but I'll show you my face. And I turned last year, turned 45 years old. Um, I don't have, I mean, this is unfiltered. It's also not the best camera in the world, but you know, so, so it is what it is. Um, but if I smile, you can see a little bit of wrinkles under my eyes, a little bit down here, right? Um, I don't really have too much for lines. It's a little bit, getting a little bit heavier here and here, but that's pretty much it. I also use this on my lips <clears throat> and I brush over my eyebrows and my, uh, and it gets on my eyelashes just from that natural treatment. And I do think that there's an improvement for those as well, but I don't consciously put it on my eyebrows and my eyelashes. It just kind of gets there. I don't rub it into my eyes because there are essential oils in it. Um, and so I don't use a treatment directly on my eyes, but this does end up, you know, kind of in the skin around my eyes and it does travel. And I have never had a problem with it, but my skin is not super sensitive. So now back to hair, what I will do today, because I know that I'm gonna wash my hair tomorrow, is I'll actually take a pretty good amount um, like that, which is, you know, what, a, a teaspoon or something. I rub it between my hands and I really wanna focus this in the bottom part and I'll just kind of run it down um, the whole line of hair. I don't want to rub my my hands together because that will um, break the the follicles and kind of you know give damage to them. And damage to your hair is, does not get repaired. So there's no such thing as a repairing serum or anything like that. All it does is kind of help stick it back together by um, moisturizing, you know, or by making it a little bit more pliable and, and less dry. So I just do this and I just kind of squeeze it in and that's on the end. Now I'm going to do the same thing at the top and I'm really going to massage this into the top. So I'm going to take about the same amount. That's about a half a dropper full and I'll rub it into my hands and then I kind of start here at the top and I'll just work my way through this way and here. And I know that the majority is actually on the palm and I'm working through with my fingertips, but that's kind of the point because as I'm going through, the palm of my hands are kind of touching the rest of the hair. And I'll just kind of work it through this way. And I really want to get it gently onto the scalp and the follicles. So the peppermint is really good for things like 
dry scalp and dandruff, um, as is the tea tree oil. Um, the, I'm trying to think of what else here is peppermint tea tree oil. There's another one that smells a little bit. There's of course the, the vetiver oil, the lavender oil. This one. I have frankincense in here, um, which I also really like the scent of. And I want to get Lang Lang. Um, that's one that I want to add to it that I haven't. And I want to also try for fun. I want to try um, pomegranate. But again, these are things that I haven't. I, I don't think that they're going to make that big of a difference. I think the key is just to have a good natural oil that you can use. And then I take this and I just comb through and make sure that it's coated all the way. Now, you know, there are those wooden brushes that you can use for this if you want. I don't think that's necessary. Um, but again, you can see from that, I get this much shed. So I do still get quite a bit of shed. Just making sure I can throw it away. Um, from just brushing, but because I brush less, it doesn't have that same impact or really make it super, uh, it's not really abrasive, so it's not breaking it off. So I'm gonna look here and you can see it is still quite quite thin, but this is my hair grown in. This is my, the thickest really my hair gets. Um, so I'm thrilled with my hair being this thick. So another way you can do this is just take a section, and I've done this just watching TV, put a little bit of oil on your hands, and you just take a section and gently move it through. You know, do this 15, 20 times. You can also do this with natural sebums instead of doing it with actual oil, and that can help to take another section, run it through, grab another section back here. And this just really helps to coat, make sure that all of the hair strands are individually coated. After I do that, I'll just take it in the back, put my fingers down like this, so I have it in three essentially even sections, and then put it in a braid. And this is also how I try to do it every night. A braid, whoops, a braid, a, a thick braid is one of the best protective uh, styles that I have found for my particular hair. Um, I just put it together because it kind of holds everything. And then I put the hair tie, which I actually don't have in front of me, so I'll have to put that in later. Uh, this is not about fashion, so this is not a fashionable hairstyle. And it's also why I had the wave in the hair because it was braided last night, but um, my hair is, is naturally a little bit wavy. But now as I pull it down, you can see there's quite a few of these baby hairs up here. So my hair is pretty short all the way around because it's still growing in. But I'll put a hair tie at the end and I will let this actually just sit. Now you can actually use heat, you can use other things as well. Um, another way is if you really want the oil to, to soak in, you can moisten your hair before you put the oil in and that really helps. But because I have a very um, coarse hair, high porosity, uh, the oil really soaks in quite quickly and it will actually be pretty dry and not even feel greasy here at the end. So if my hair is feeling really dry at the end, sometimes I'll just put the oil directly on it and by morning it feels natural and normal and soft and supple. But putting a little bit of water in with that can help because it can just um, help to, it to absorb more, more, more moisture. So that's kind of it. So tomorrow I will mix up some honey and egg and... I can put other things with that as well, but right now that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, you can, yeah, there's many other things. Uh, apple cider vinegar for our rinse is quite good for it. And then um, that will be my wash and it will be good for another week. So my hairstyles are usually pulled back, some form of pulled back. They can either be a ponytail or some sort of a bun. Sometimes it's a braid. I mean, I will do the braid during the day if I if I feel like it, but that's essentially what it is. Usually Sunday I have it down, but I don't keep it down too much because it's so fine and when it's fine and long, it tangles on itself pretty quickly, uh, especially when it needs that trim. So I think when I come back from washing it, I may do a trim and then you can see what that looks like, but hopefully that will help you. You can get some oils like this, just mix your own do not bother spending money on it. You get so many fillers and essential oils, like you know, organic 
high quality organic essential oils, which this seems to be, um, are so inexpensive now, just use your own. And this will last a really long time. So I use it every day for my face twice a day, and then I use it for my hair fairly consistently. My husband uses it too, and it just goes and goes and goes and goes. So um, that's pretty much all I have to say. If you have any questions about thin, fine, aging, grain, uh, oily, but dry on the ends, long PCOS hair, um, male, pattern bald, male pattern balding hair um, that you want to ask, go ahead and leave that in the comments below and you can subscribe, like, and share this if it's of interest to you or you think it might be of interest to someone else. And hopefully you are on um, your way to having hair that you really truly love and enjoy. So I will see you in the next video.